There's definitely a lot of projects in the past in my career that have crossed over with the direction of this show. Being able to do big world tours, being able to do halftime shows at Super Bowl and um, constantly working with an idea of elaborate art pieces, elaborate costuming, drew my inspiration into being able to execute this show. With the Super Bowl and puppeteer work and building the sharks and building the beach balls and the palm trees and exploring that world of mobility it definitely served a great purpose in how to build this show and what we can do different and what can i do that really kind of balances the line between costume design and mascot and i think that's very important for the show that we're sticking to the creativity of the actual fashion forward costuming process of it rather than you know walk about costumes there's already great presidents, you know, set on the show as to what this is all about. And, you know, you're wearing masks, you're wearing costumes and the ideas of a reveal. But for us, I wanted to bring something a little bit more diverse, you know, and play with different characters, bring in animals, bring in cartoons, bring in kind of like a variety of a demographic that could relate to this and not be so serious about building these costumes, but more so just have fun and explore the limitations of what can we do with masks. It's my first time truly working with 360 masks. So for me, it was an incredible experience working and collaborating with some of the best fabricators um, to have this come to life. And my limitations kind of happened then as to what we can and cannot do to make a sketch turn into a live you know, walk of art. A lot of it was kind of learning as we're building these costumes. What fabrics can I get away with? What can we use? What's not overheating the costume? What's creating mobility? You know, and a lot of it we just kept learning through the short time of the builds. I'm so freaking confused right now. I don't know who I am. For season one, we had to, of course, um, not really having any kind of specific platform as how to do this. Um, it was pretty much our challenging moment to figure out how to create the costumes from the artwork. And then from there, it was working with a talent that was choosing their own costumes or having the handpicks on what they wanted to do and how to customize all this and working with my fabricators on every single process from the beginning to end, doing a wired sample of the mask, then building in all the foam and the netting in order for us to get in oxygen airways and also have visibility. We got lucky if we had two fittings. So in our first fitting, um, we really had to nail down all the issues and being able to work with talent, having open communication, knowing that you know this is kind of like a trial run for us to get these going on stage and it was pretty incredible to have that working relationship where you know we got really great feedback and we were able to correct costumes moving forward and at the same time even like elevate some of the costumes when they wanted to be a little bit more challenging on their masks and a little bit more restricting on their wardrobe. Who's behind the mask? It makes you crazy. The talent was casted for the show. They were proposed with multiple ideas of what the artwork was already like. Um, I did all the designs prior to the casting so that there were options to send out. Um, and then the talent kind of gravitated towards one or two of the sketches and then we had a phone call as far as what direction I think would be best for them and being able to assist as far as what message they wanna portray or why they wanted to be this character on the show and how can I make it come to life even more. Here we have the peacock from season one. The mask is a 360 mask. So this was one of the first ones that we actually made. It is cut into two different parts of a visual and a vocal. So underneath the beak, we were able to camouflage a netting uh, specified for echoic projection and kind of vocal training. So everything that you see projects the voice as loud as pure mic. Then we were able to cut into screens and open hole for um, straight on peripheral vision coming out of the beak. So that this is definitely one of the most detailed and intricate costumes. Here we have kind of my vintage soldier, lost in the woods, forest creature deer. The mask, the leathers, everything was hand painted and hand crafted and then aged as well to kind of create this vintage military gas mask type of a character. Uh, we were able to completely open up the bottom of the mask so that the full vocal comes from underneath, then create airways for the nozzle of the mask and then also keep it as true to the eyesight as we could. He has elements in the costume that do light up and that kind of created the more of an industrial effect to the costume. So this was like my balance between a little bit of steampunk, a little bit of um, Civil War vintage military aspect to it. 
and pretty much one of my favorite guys that gets overlooked. Here we have the monster, who is also the winner of season one. Um, one of the most different costumes from the rest. This was one of the challenging costumes for us to make it work, to create a human shape without an actual shape of a costume, and also create a human toy. You know, people in general are not used to wearing masks, so when you're in a full kind of walkabout costume, it's being able to maneuver your balance and your movement and your capability to perform. So to be able to create mobility in the arm movements and the leg movements, we have to create kind of like the cylindrical creature and then figure out the mouth opening being right where the face sits and then also create a giant eye which gives us um, a full visual and also airways. A lot of challenges with this guy, but it actually turned out pretty incredible. It's great to have an imagination and it's incredible for me to put something on paper and be like, this is what we're making. But in reality, it's like not every costume can be made and not everything, you know, could be found. And we are in such a time crunch that sometimes like I have to even wheel myself back in and be realistic. There's something so interesting about this show because it almost is a new platform of liberation for a lot of these artists. A costume in general tells a beautiful story. It's something that you kind of let your imagination run wild with prior to anybody singing or you know speaking the first lines. It sets the tone of any scene or any performance. And I think um, what's kind of the beautiful part about the show is you're hidden, you're masked, yet you're letting your voice speak and kind of represent who you are and it's not being able to be judged by any anything from the past or what you've done or your career or where you are in your life, you know, it becomes kind of like this free birth again of um, just being able to have fun on stage. I think that's probably to me the most beautiful thing to see how many people truly come out of the show just like saying that it was the best experience of their lifetime, you know, because it's completely shaped around art. Take it up! Take it up! Keep Wait, no way. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, baby.